All right, so to get this set up, let's think about what we need to do. We need to actually zoom in to this shot right here. And for starters, let's just create a new adjustment layer. Drag that adjustment layer onto your timeline and then go to the middle of your transition by clicking the up and down arrow keys. Now hold the shift key and the left arrow key three times. One, two, three. That will jump you 15 frames out in that direction. Now hit C on the keyboard and make a cut right there and then also at your transition point. Now just delete the rest of the adjustment layers. Now what we need to do is actually create the base of this effect. This is the hardest part, but once you are done, it is very easy. Go to the effects tab and type in replicate. Drag on replicate onto your adjustment layer. You'll notice that it actually replicates the image. Change the count to three, and this is going to be what we work off of. Now go to the effects tab and type in mirror. Drag on the video effects distort mirror onto that adjustment layer, and this is what we wanna play around with. Your reflection center, you'll notice that if I drag the X value to the left, my right hand side comes in to the left. So you wanna drag that in till it gets really close till you kind of see your image or that hard line disappear. Now, I so now what you wanna do is hit Control C on mirror and Control V, and then simply click the reset button next to the reflection center. Now what we wanna do is change the reflection angle 90 degrees. So now we're rotating this to the bottom. So in order to adjust this up and down, we need to change our Y value. So drag your Y value to the right and then get it close to that line. And once you get close, you can actually hold control or command on a Mac and it will start to slow down. So get that line till it disappears and repeat the process. Click mirror, control C, control V, and then change your reflection angle to 180. Now click the reset button on your reflection center and since we're flipping it to the left hand side, let's drag our X value to the left. And let's get that close to that line, hold control until that line disappears. Perfect. Now let's do this one more time. Click on mirror, control C, control V. Change that reflection 90 degrees again, so 270. Click reset and now we're going up and down. So let's change our Y value up a little bit. So we're gonna drag this to the left. Now once we get close, hold control and drag that around till you get rid of that line. Now we have finished the basis of this process. We can actually hold Alt on a PC to click and drag and copy this over to future videos when we need it. So what does this do? Well, if we're zooming into this clip right here, we actually don't need this adjustment layer. That was just for a later example, which we're gonna jump into next, but I wanted to get the hard part out of the way. In order to zoom in, all you have to do is create another adjustment layer and it can be any duration, just make it however long you want. And then go to the effects tab and type in transform. Now drag on the transform effect and what you're going to do is keyframe the scale at the beginning and go somewhere towards the end and zoom this image in as far as you like. Now right click on your first keyframe and go to ease out. Right click on your second keyframe and go to ease in. Click the down arrow next to scale and drag this little line down so that we can drag this first part out a little bit, nice and flat, so it's slowly starting to go into that ending keyframe. And then I like to drag my ending keyframe like this, so then it's a nice fast ramp. If you want it faster, you can actually manipulate this ramp by pulling it down so then it's more sharp curve. And then I drag this keyframe all the way to the end. Now, if you play back through that, you'll see that it starts to zoom into that actual image. But you'll notice there's actually no motion blur. So uncheck use composition shutter angle and change that to about 100. That will create motion blur. So now that we have done that, why did we make this in the first place? Well, if you think about it, if we're zooming into this image, this is already max zoom in. So if we change the scale and zoom out, we're gonna going, we're going to get edges. Now, since we've created this adjustment layer, we can actually zoom in and out and you won't see the edges anymore. So you're going to create another adjustment layer and drag that over that adjustment layer you already created. And this adjustment layer is, you guessed it, our transform adjustment layer. So go to the effects tab, type in transform, drag your transform on there. And you'll notice if we increase our scale, you'll see that we start to get rid of those weird shapes on the edges. So increasing our scale to 300 actually creates it back to the normal image. Now what we wanna do is 
right at the beginning portion a little bit, you actually wanna change the scale by zooming out a little bit, however much you want. I'm gonna do 191. Click the scale keyframe and go a couple frames and change this back to 300. What that does is it allows us to zoom in and then it keeps zooming in. So it's a little bit more realistic. But now let's manipulate these keyframes. Right click on the first keyframe, ease out. Right click on the second one, ease in. Click the down arrow and let's manipulate this. We want this to start fast. So we're actually going to drag that first keyframe up like that. So it swoops in and then it's a nice gradual smooth transition into that. So it looks like this. Again, we have no motion blur happening right here. So if you want, you can uncheck use composition shutter angle and change that to 100. It adds a subtle motion blur. So we just created a simple zoom in effect. Well, how do you add the hit effect? Well, all you have to do is pick a point that you want to start the shake and toggle a position keyframe. The key here is subtlety that's a word. All you have to do is click the right arrow key one time and then start to move your keyframes around a little bit. Again, keeping in mind that if you hold control, it will move it nice and slow. So move it around a little bit, hit the right arrow key, move it around again, and you'll notice that a keyframe is automatically generated. So do that a couple times and then once you're done, go right arrow key one more time and click this reset button. That will reset the keyframes back to the standard keyframe. So now playing back through this whole thing, we have this.